Well, welcome back to another Dino Days video. And today we have a beautiful FN2 in for a remap using the Ecotech software. Check that out. Uncle Keith's already been busy. He's painted up this lovely rocker cover that the lads have fitted in it. And it looks, oh, it looks amazing. You can't quite see, but it does flip from purple to green. It is, oh, there we go. Look at that. Very nice. So initially we're going to do a standard power run and then we're going to flash the stock ECU with Ecotech software and Rich is going to get going and shooting. Excited lads? Always. Always excited. Let's do it. Red FN2, uh, some modifications, including a glorious carbon fibre bonnet that I very much like. Yeah, lovely this car. I think it is uh, very nice. His uh, lady friend, wife, I'm not sure if it's his wife or his girlfriend, but uh, she rang up Probably and, and said earlier uh, earlier on in the week, uh, could she buy a lovely rock cover for him? As and, a surprise. Uh, as a surprise. Uh, we said, yeah, we've got two in stock, so we showed her the two that we've got. Uh, she picked one that she wanted or thought that he might like. Oh, and he did like it. And he did like it. And we fitted that first thing somewhere. So we sort of did that as a, as a bit of an extra this morning uh, before Matt. But not that a, was a major problem. It was the uh, one I wanted to take home. To be fair, it was, jumper. A, yeah, to be fair, it was the one that Dan wanted. But never mind. Never mind, it's solved. Yeah, so we fitted that first thing oh, this morning. Oh, have got an FN2. <laughs> <laughs> but all the, uh, all the mods were already on the car. So we've got a Piper Manifold with decap. We've got an M2 exhaust system. We have got a Skunk 2 Pro Series 
inlet manifold and a CPL big bore induction kit. Indeed we have. So those mods, a lot of those mods are proven within themselves. But with this particular car, we did get a loll in the mid-range that we could not shift. Now, it did have that loll in standard form yeah. with the standard map on it, uh, but obviously with the modifications on. Um, and then when we started tuning, it never went away. Yeah, um, it's, it's a restriction, isn't it? It's a restriction of some sort. So there's a combination of those mods that something doesn't like. I would hazard a guess it's going to be the M2 exhaust. I'd start I'd start there. Yeah, was where I would start. Now, basically, when we see these sort of lols in the mid-range, you know that you're going that way because you're pulling a load of fuel out. It's really rich in the mid-range. You're pulling a load of fuel out and the power's not increasing. So it, it, it isn't down to the map at that point. We can see it in standard form. You can see it once the map's on. Uh, once we're obviously mapping and we're tuning, you can still see it. We're working around it. We've gone through cam time. We've gone through ignition time. We've gone through fueling. Uh, and none of it's made a difference to that dip. It, 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 at that point, it's a mechanical restriction. Um, it's, it's a flow issue. So whether it doesn't like the uh, two and a half inch exhaust. The combination of... The of... combination of the Piper Manifolds. We've had the Piper Manifolds and they make power. Now, wrong, this car has made power. It's finished at 231. So we've made peak power. I'm just talking about flow in the mid-range. And it's that flow in the mid-range that it, we've lost power there. Where mm. it would be nice if we could still make it 231. But then obviously not have any of that hump in the, in the mid-range. I mean, you can physically sort of, to be fair, feel it. I know that sounds sort of strange, but I could feel it on the dyno that I could feel it lolls off power and then comes back again. And almost in the top end of the range, it does the same again, not as drastically, but it does die off and then come back again. It has a second wave, almost like the exhaust is full. And then it's... Did you feel the CV uh, grease coming out of it? No, I didn't. I did feel a little bit of a wobble. Uh, I seen Jensen's lip wobble when he had yeah, his hands when he had, and, couldn't see the grease, but that is unfortunately part of the course when you're running these cars at 140 mile an hour for yeah. an hour and a bit. Then you know these things happen, don't they? It drops some fabulous bombs. Yeah, it drops some nice bombs. I, I think with this car, I would start with a Tegu 70 mil if it was mine. See what difference that makes and how that performs. We have done the Piper manifolds with decats and sport caps and the Tegu 70 mil, and I don't think we've. And whilst you, we do get a little bit of a dip, it's never been that pronounced before. No. Um, so if it was to the Piper manifold's got bigger primaries, hasn't it? It has got bigger primaries, but it is a shorter manifold. Mm. Um, so there's fours and against on both sides. I think if you change the Tegu 70 mil and you still had a dead spot in it, I'd just put a four to one. Uh, jap speed on it and take the piper off and see what that because the com the other combination of mods has it, it, never been a problem mm. so i don't believe that's the case but obviously if for example if you swap the exhaust and it helps it and then it doesn't completely alleviate it then it might be worth swapping the manifold to see if that alleviates it but like i said this is the thing with tuning every car on its own merit some cars would be fine with these mods uh, this car doesn't particularly like these mods for whatever reason or it's got that low point in it through a combination of mods mm. Um, yeah, it could just literally be the amount of airflow in that mid-range because yeah. of the inlet manifold and the, the two and a half inch exhaust just isn't enough and it's just backing up. Mm. But that's for another day. I'm sure he, he may take that on board and, and have a look He's at it. It's got a sparkly, shiny rocket cover. It's dropping bombs. It's quicker now than it ever has been. He's going to love this. It will be. He'll be over He's going to love this. Yes, car. I'm sure he'll be. It's come a long there. way. And he survived the hotel in Nuneaton. Oh, did he? Right. Yeah. yeah, so there's all positives to be had there. Yeah. Mm. Let's go look at the graph. Let's have a look at the graph. Let's do it. Okay, so red line is as she came in, blue line is as she leaves, some peak power, lots in the mid range there, as you can see. And we finish on 231 brake horsepower, which is 197 at the wheels. And as you can see, there's a beautiful red FN2 Civic and it's completed. He's gonna absolutely love it. Check that out. I'm going for the code word for the video. If you got as far as this is Uncle Keith's paint shop. Look at that, it's beautiful. I wish the camera picked it up better. But uh, there you go. What a lovely, what a lovely car. And a great, a great couple as well. So hopefully we'll see them again. But uh, yeah, thanks for, st thanks for sticking around on this video. And we'll see you on the next one. Boy, I'll say it again. Life was pretty fast.